I pray that your spirit would overwhelm us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. May you inhabit our praises as we sing out to you, Lord God. We know that nothing and no one can separate us from you, Lord God, and we praise you for that. For those, Lord God, that are still making their way here to the chapel, bring them here safely. Those watching online that couldn't be here this morning, Father God, bless them all wherever they're at today, Father. And as we worship you here in the parking lot, in spirit and in truth, Lord God, may you go before us as we praise you. In Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's worship.
out your presence in me. Awesome. Well, good morning. So good to see you all back here on this campus. Just know that we've been praying for you uh, week by week, really day by day, just praying that the Lord's hand would be upon you and your families, upon your children and your grandchildren during this time. Uh, definitely asking the Lord to give you all wisdom as you seek to lead your family in the ways of the Lord. But this morning, we're just so thankful that you're here, that you're on this property, that we have the opportunity to minister to you. Uh, next Wednesday evening, we'll do another drive-in service. Pastor Raw will continue through the book of Romans in chapters 13 and 14. We encourage you to come on out. It was a beautiful um, evening last Wednesday. So uh, just be in tune to everything that's taking place here at your church. Um, as you heard Scott mention at the beginning of the service, we are going to be doing a high school graduation ceremony here on Tuesday at 5 p.m. If you haven't gotten your high school student registered for that, you can do so. Just call the chapel tomorrow um, at any time of the day from 8 to 5 p.m. and they'll get you uh, dialed in. And again, I just encourage you all to stay tuned into everything that's taking place on Somebody Loves You Worldwide with the weekly Bible studies, um, especially in the days that are taking pl place right now, all the challenges that we find ourselves in. Uh, we know that the Lord is still on the throne and we continue to look to him for wisdom, uh, for strength, and as a source of our peace. Uh, this Saturday, ladies, want to remind you that Essential Wisdom will be on at 10 o'clock on Somebody Loves You Worldwide's YouTube channel. So I encourage you ladies to tune into that. But right now, why don't we pray? Ask the Lord to continue to go before us this morning. Father, we do thank you for your grace, your love, and your compassion upon our lives. We pray that you'd anoint this morning's message, Lord, that you'd anoint our pastor, that you prepare our hearts to receive uh, your word. We pray for our nation, Lord, that you would have mercy upon us, Lord, and that you would do a mighty work in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. So this next song we're going to do for you guys is one that we introduced to you all on Wednesday night, and it's entitled No Weapon, and I think um, a lot has happened since... We met last this past Wednesday up to today. I think we all can agree to that. Um, and the song just seems very fitting. And I want to take this time to encourage you all that know that God is on the throne. And a lot of times we, we can see the news and we can see social media and stuff like that and think, what's happening? What's going on? But we know that the word says, greater is he that is in us than he that is of this world. So. No matter what you guys see or hear, know that God holds everything in the palm of his hand and that no weapon formed against us will prosper because he is faithful. And so 
If you guys are feeling fearful or scared, you know, I just felt compelled to tell you guys, know that God is on the throne. Never forget it. Never forget it. He's always there, and he will be with us to the end. When darkness closes in on every side, when battles rage and when the waters rise, I fear no evil for I know the truth. Nothing can separate my heart from you, cause there's no weapon stronger There's no weapon stronger than your love. Cause there's no weapon stronger than your love. There's no weapon stronger than your love. No height, no depth can overcome. Cause there's no weapon stronger than your love.
sing it again. that for every single person in all of these cars here this morning and for those watching online Lord God I ask for your favor and your blessing to be bestowed, bestowed upon them Jesus as we are all gathered together as one in one accord worshiping you Lord praising you and thanking you Father God for who you are and how you have sustained us this way Lord, I pray that you bless each family, Father God, all of us that are going through it right now and not understanding a lot of things going on around us, but yet we know one thing, 
that you are there. And help us, Father God, to realize these things, Father God. May we remember these times, Lord God, gathering together as one worshiping you, that you are always present before us and that you go before us and you watch over us, Jesus. So as our pastor comes up now to share with us thy word for the day in preparation for the week ahead, may you bless our hearts, Lord Jesus. Go before us, strengthen us, and enable us for your glory. We love you so much, and we thank you and we bless you. We ask these things now in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's church says, amen. Awesome. Well, <laughs> good to see you guys here this morning, all the way here. And we just really want to thank God for what he has done, watching God move. And also we need to pray for what's happening across the country today. You know, you can really tell that uh, we're living in different days for sure, different days. And uh, we don't know what to expect in the coming days to come, but we do know that the Bible speaks very clearly what's going to take place in the last days. And one of the things that's going to take place in the last days, there are going to be people that are going to be moving away from Christ. There's going to be a falling away, a lack of faith. And uh, this week as I was going over my lesson, I thought, you know, this is a perfect lesson for this morning. Not knowing and recognizing what would happen in Los Angeles, you know, this uh, last night. And what's happened across the country every single night. It's actually out of control. It's not in control. It's out of control. And people are asking the question, why are these, ha why are these things happening? Men can't control it. We know that there is called a devil, the enemy, that actually hates Christians, hates the light, but he loves the darkness. He is the prince of darkness. And there is a person in the Old Testament, as a matter of fact, a couple of people in the Old Testament. And one of them that really attracted me when I was reading the scriptures, you know, his name really just spoke to me because his name, Methuselah, means when he shall die, it shall come. When he dies, it shall come. And Methuselah was a person that God not only was going to use, just like he's going to use you, he's going to use you, he's going to use me. But at the same time, when God is going to use us, we need to be ready to be used. Otherwise, what can we say? What can we do? And one of the things that God wants us to do is to know him intimately intimately to know him so that he can speak to us he already knows us but as we get to know him even more intimately we're going to get to know his voice we're going to get to know his word and we're going to be looking around and we're going to be able to discern what is taking place in the last days what's happening let me read from the book of genesis if you have your bibles chapter 5 Verse 25 to 27. You know, as I looked up in the scriptures about Methuselah, or all the people they lived a long time, because Methuselah lived 969 years. Then Adam lived 930 years. And then Adam's son, Seth, lived 912 years. And then Seth's son, Enos, lived 905 years. And then Methuselah's grandfather, Jared, lived 962 years. And then Methuselah, his grandson, Noah, lived 950 years. And Methuselah lived 969 years. 969 years. To me, I find it interesting that 969 years will be given to Methuselah. And Methuselah lived in a very critical time. We read last week about Enos. When Enos walked with God, he was not because God took him. And the Lord took Enos not only because God knew what was coming ahead. Judgment was coming. We know that the church today is looking around and saying, Lord, how long? All these things going on, how long? I have my little children. I have my grandkids. I have my wife. I have my husband. 
what's going to happen to us? And it's a, it's a good question to ask, what's going to happen to us? Listen to what Genesis chapter 5, 25 to 27 says. In Methuselah live 187 years and begot Lamech. And he begot Lamech, Methuselah lived 782 years and had a son and daughters. So all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and then he died. And then he died. Now we know that every one of us are going to die one day. There's an appointed time for a man to live and then he will die. That's what the scripture says. Death will come. And when death comes, we all have that question, you know, what is it like to die and where are we going to be and what is heaven like? You know, we can read about heaven where we really don't know how heaven's going to be because heaven is beyond us. It's just going to be that place that the scripture talks about that is going to be incredible when we see it and we're at the feet of Jesus and Jesus is reigning and ruling. And our loved ones and our friends, our kids, our grandkids, they will still live here if we die before the Lord comes again. But this hope that we have in Jesus coming again, as he next spoke about the rapture of the church, that as I see what's going on across the country, where I see what's going on in the church today, I really believe that the time is ripe for the coming of Jesus. And if he doesn't come in this generation, there is a generation they will never die because the Bible says what? The Lord will come for that generation. People didn't even know that Enoch's name, or actually uh, Methuselah's name, meant that when he shall die, it shall come. That the judgment of God would come through Noah, where God would come to Noah because everything was wrong in the time of Noah. He says, no, I'm going to give you 120 years. You're going to build me a boat. And you and your wife and your three kids and their wives are going to go into the ark. And I'm going to wipe out millions and billions of people. They're never going to see heaven. And it happened. It happened. God's word comes true. That's what the Bible teaches. And so when I read the scriptures and I read about prophecy, I really believe that we are living and we need to be watching what's ahead through prayer, fellowship, coming to church, praying that they'll give us our churches back. And not keep people out of church. And keep pastors studying, teaching the word of God. Because I believe that the whole thing about Satan, he wants to close on the church. He doesn't want people to go to church. He doesn't want your kids to be in Sunday school. But again, it's the times of Methuselah who are living in such a time as that. In these days. And the, and the question that I asked myself this week, are we, li are we really living in the last days? You know, according to Scripture, when you go to the New Testament or you go to the Old Testament, when you come to the New Testament, the book of Matthew chapter 24, 25, Mark 13, Luke 21, and going through Paul's epistles, and then to come to the end of the book of Jude, you have the book of Revelation, Chapter 1's introduction, chapter 2 and 3 are the seven churches, the condition of the church. Chapter 4, you know, John enters heaven. He gets raptured to heaven. And then in chapter 5, he's before the throne of God. And Jesus is there and they're worshiping Jesus. And the angels worshiping. And then you turn the page into chapter 6 to chapter 19. And all hell breaks loose. All hell. We call that the last seven years of world history. The tribulation period. The first three and a half semi-tribulation. The last three and a half, half, the Bible says, the great tribulation. There's no way out. And when you look at your life today, is this the beginning of the end? I believe it is. The beginning of the end. 
I know that in my age, my age at this particular moment, my age is, you know, it's limited. I'm at the end, ready to see Jesus. But some of you that are young, and your kids and your daughters, sons and daughters, you may have babies, you may have five, four-year-olds, you know, and maybe teenagers, whatever it is, and then they're thinking, well, what's going to happen to us in the future to come here in America or here in the world? What's happening is all over the world. That virus was all over the world. What's next? We see here America being burned down, cities. Cities being burned down by people that don't care. Devil using them. And people that follow them without discernment. And we as a church need to have discernment. So we can be at the right place at the right time and we can do the right thing without offending nor is offending people or offending God, but we need to be obedient to the word of God just like Manasseh. He says in Matthew 24, 3, Now at, as he sat down on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. You see, there's going to be a time of deception. I believe the time of deception is right now. It's happening right now. People think that burning down buildings, it's okay. We want to be hurt. But you don't hear, you know, that's a way to get attention, you know, to do the right thing. But that's a, a, a thing that you do when people hate you. And I know that God, in His grace, in His love and mercy, as we're looking down at today, that we need as a church to really pray. To really pray for this church. To pray for you. To pray for each other. To pray for our families. Because the disciples wanted to know what's going to happen. If you notice first, the first thing that's going to take place is deception. Not earthquakes. Not famine. Not pestilence. He said what deception. Apostasy would come. And he goes on to say, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, will deceive many, not few. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilence, earthquakes in various places and all these things are the beginning of plural sorrows the beginning not the end the beginning and we're seeing that the beginning of whatever's coming in the future and my hope is not in the future my hope is in Jesus Christ not in this world my hope is in heaven for Christ has called me to be. And for each one of us, we should be you know, praying, thinking like that. Because if we are the last generation because before Christ comes, man, we need to be spiritual. We need to know the Scriptures. We need to know that in the Scriptures, we talked about the coming of the Lord. But it's incredible, you know, going to Romans that this summer Wednesday nights, you know, I came across again that chapter 11 that we finished this last Wednesday. And again, this caught my eye because he tells you in the book of Romans that the time when the Lord is going to come, there's a number of, a number of Gentiles from the time that Jesus came and the day of Pentecost that would be saved and there is a generation or actually there are these Gentiles that are going to be saved and there's a number of them and when that number rises up and that number comes to pass, the end will come. Listen to what Paul says in 1125 Romans. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery lest you should be wise in your own opinions. That blindness in part has happened to Israel. So he's dealing with Israel. What's wrong with Israel? They're blind. They can't see. 
they're going to be able to see when the church is taken, taken out of this way, Israel will be able to see in the middle of the tribulation period, they're going to wake up, they're going to open their eyes, and they're going to see the Antichrist, and they're going to say, wow, man, we are Israel. God has called us. He is our Messiah. And 144,000 Jews will be here. The Bible says they'll be virgins and they'll be preaching the gospel. And two witnesses is Elisha, which we see, and Enoch, which never died. Both of them will be here on the earth. And the Bible says that they're going to stone them to death in Jerusalem. And they're going to be on the ground for three and a half days. And on the third day, they're going to rise from the dead. And as they're looking up, the cameras all over the world will be watching them going into heaven. And then at the end of three and a half, they're going to be looking up and Jesus is coming. Riding upon white horses. He goes on to say this. He says, blindness in part has happened to Israel until... The fullness of the Gentiles has come in. The last Gentile to be saved, it's over. Over. It's over. It could happen at any time. There is a number that God has in his book of Gentiles that are going to be saved. And when that's done, it's done. God will deal with Israel. And as I was, I was reading this, I was just blown away. I go, God, Lord, this is incredible what you've given to us. That you've given us Enoch, you've given us Methuselah, you've given us Noah. And that all these things that are happening and going on in the world is not by coincidence. But as Hebrews 9, 27 says, he says that there is an appointed time for men to die once. And after this, the judgment of God will come. The judgment of God will come. And here we are. Here we are. All these things going on in the world today. And this morning here we're safe. We're not close to these things that are going on. I heard down in, uh, the, you know, down by uh, uh, Morita or actually by the malls over here going towards San Bernardino. You know, there was good things going on last night there too. People are unhappy. They can blame it on racist system. People are unhappy. God made everybody equal. They need Jesus. They need Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And the devil has deceived them. Deceived them all. And we as the church need to pray for these people. That even during this, you know, these hard times, they can find Jesus in their own personal lives. But the Holy Spirit is working, and the Holy Spirit will continue to work. As he did in the early days of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, when John the Baptist was preaching, Jesus was here, he was baptized, and all the way to the end of his ministry, he was crucified, he died, he rose, he's coming back again. We've been here almost 2,000 years, and God is going to send His Son once again. Jesus is coming. He's coming as the judge of the world, not as the Savior of the world. And I get concerned about that because of people that don't know Him. But you know what? The long-suffering of the Lord, long-suffering for you, for me, for everyone out there, the long-suffering of Jesus Christ, the grace of God, the love of God, the mercies of God. He says in 2 Peter 3, 9, he says, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise that He come. As some count slackness. But His long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. God wants us to repent. Methuselah, Noah, Enoch, and so many others as we go through the scriptures to learn exactly what God desires from his people. Repentance. So that he can give us his long suffering, his mercies, his love. And I think that as we think about these things today, 
As I went back and read the book of Genesis this week, chapter 6, verse 3, he says to, to Noah, he says, Look, Noah, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with you, or that shall not strive with men forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. And Noah, the end will come. Noah, build an ark. And when you finish that ark, Society is done. Society is done. You and your family will go into the ark. And I will close the door. You see, he didn't close the door. God closed the door. And the Lord shut the door. The door to salvation. The door to salvation. Nobody could get saved after the ark was built. Because they rejected God. They rejected God. But Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man wants to come in, hey, come on in. I love you. I'll give you salvation. Don't wait until the door is shut. The door is open. Because he loves you, because he cares for you, and he cares for your family. He goes on to say in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, and it says, And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent and thoughts of his heart was only to do continually evil. And the Lord was sorry that he had made men on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. How do you know? How do you know that? I mean, think how God feels this morning. His heart is broken. And the Lord said, I will destroy men whom I have created from the face of the whole earth both men and beasts and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made men on the earth. People this time, at this time, were living as if there was no God. God won't punish. There's no devil. It's only us. And yet the devil is such a liar. He's deceived so many in the last week, so many. And today they are deceived. And yet God warns, look up for my redemption draw at night. Behold, I'm coming quickly. And God has allowed this to happen. Like in the days of Methuselah, like the days of Noah. And I don't understand that when they see these things going on, how can they not believe in God? How come they don't stand back and say, whoa, what's going on? After having two and a half months already of virus, a virus where you can't even go shopping, you can't do nothing but stay home, how can you not believe in God? That God's in control. And that God is speaking loud and clear to the church, to the world. And this is why Paul the Apostle in Ephesians 2, 8 said, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Notice, the gift of God. He says, It is the gift of God and not of works, as anybody should start boasting. First Peter 3, 20 says, Who formerly were disobedient, who were once divine long suffering, waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few... You notice in the Old Testament, there's a remnant all the time where few, that is, eight souls were saved through the water. Were saved. They were not drowned. I wonder who today are the few that God has spared. The few that Jesus Christ has looked upon. God is, pa God is patient. Patient and loving and kind. And he's calling out to the church, how long, how long? before I come? How long do I have to wait before I send my judgment? You know, in First Thessalonians, Paul, chapter 110 said, he says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, and even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. That word wrath there in the Greek, if you look it up, it means not God's wrath, it means the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. It speaks of the tribulation period, the wrath of God upon this whole world that is going to suffer. The church will be taken out of here already. We'll be in heaven. 
that some of your families will be left behind, some of your friends, or maybe even you will be left behind, and you're going to have to face the Antichrist. And you're going to have to face people like down in L.A., down in Atlanta, down in New York, down in those places that hate people, and they hate America, and they hate the government. People, we need to repent. We need to pray. We need to be long-suffering like Jesus. We need to be kind. And we need to ask God to give us His wisdom and His knowledge so that we can be believable. That when people look at me, they recognize that I'm a real Christian, that I really truly believe in Jesus Christ, that He is my Lord, He is my Savior. Isaiah said this in chapter 55, 6. He says, Seek the Lord while you may be able to find Him. Call upon Him while He is near you. Let the wicked forsake His way and the unrighteous man His thoughts. Let Him return to the Lord and He will have mercy on Him and to our God for He will abundantly forgive, forgive, forgive you. Forgive you. We don't know. That we recognize that God gives second chances. That he's coming. Matusala. When he shall die, he shall come. The fullness of God's love, the fullness of God's grace. Philippians 3.20 says, For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that is to may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. That's a reference to the rapture of the church again. Again. We need to do what Paul says in his letter to the Romans. I therefore beseech you, for brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind, he says, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Are you in God's perfect will today? Are you sure that you're in God's perfect will so that he can use your life? I pray for you today. I pray for those people in L.A. I pray for those people in every state that things would stop, that God somehow would stop them, and that they would see that Jesus Christ is Lord, and He's the Savior of the world. Government is not the Savior of the world. The police is not the Savior of the world. The military is not the Savior of the world. The church is not the Savior of the world. There's one Jesus Christ, and He's King of kings and Lord of lords, and He's the one that has saved the church, His church, and that's why we're here. In conclusion, you call me master and obey me not. You call me light and see me not. You call me way and walk me not. You call me life and desire me not. You call me wise and follow me not. You call me fair and love me not. You call me rich and ask me not. You call me eternal and seek me not. You call me gracious and trust me not. You call me noble and serve me not. You call me mighty and honor me not. You call me just and hear me not. If I condemn you, blame me not. And then, finally, it is not the length of our life that counts, but the quality of the life that exists. The life that exists, the quality of life. And we need to have quality in our lives. Not the length, but the quality. Father, I pray in your name that your Holy Spirit would be with us. Lord, that you be with these people, that you would anoint your people. And Lord, those that uh, needed to come, Lord God, but they couldn't come, pray for them, anoint them. Lord, let us hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church, that we would know your voice, Lord. And Lord, that we would do exactly what you say, Lord, as we worship you, 
And Lord, this morning we come to you, Lord God, to receive offering and tithe, Lord. And Lord, that you would bless it to continue your work, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he watch over you. We'll see you on Wednesday night. We're, ch we're dealing with Romans chapter 13 and 14. We're going to speak about government. That's what those chapters are about, about obeying those things that God says. And so as you go home today, read, pray, wait upon the Lord to speak to your heart. We love you and we pray for you. God bless.
we're desperate for your presence. All we need is you. Well, we are here at the end of second service, so thankful for all those that came out and those that are tuning in right now. Right now, as you start exiting the parking lot, the ushers are going to release you lane by lane, so they'll lead you out of here as smooth and easy as possible. Everybody that is waving at you is part of our volunteers, and um, such a blessing to be able to serve in the capacity here. Pastor Raul, going through this text, we asked you this in the beginning of first service. You know, we're living in very interesting times. We know that. Interesting time for the church. Interesting time in your ministry as well. You, you've gone, you got saved in 1972, and you've gone through the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, and, and even today. And there's seasons. Um, the importance of staying fit. You know, Paul says to be ready in season and out of season. And we are called to preach the gospel. Right now, Raul, where is your heart motivated in the teaching and the preaching of God's Word right now? Well, for me, I, what I can see, this is a time where people really have to examine their Christianity because you really got to be in the Word, you got to be in prayer, you got to be in fellowship, and they're making it tough today for the church. So what does the church do? I, only, I really believe that the, all, the only thing we can do is we pray and we wait that God is the only one to get us back into the sanctuary. The only one, uh, the government can, cities can, and I think it's going to take churches, not church churches, to really spend time not complaining, not murmuring, but praying, asking God to do a miracle. You know, you've always said this before, because we are called to have a relationship with the Lord, and it can't just be like a Sunday thing and live however you want throughout Monday. This has to be, a, people want to see genuine faith, a faith that is trusting the Lord through the trials, that is teaching their children, um, and truly walking by faith. That's very important about having a relationship with the Lord. Encourage these people right now to just not play church, but be the church. Well, thank you for coming this morning, and I pray that you guys will come again, but that you come again ready to receive the Word of God, and you pray this week for God to bring more people that might be walking away from the Lord, maybe sliding back, you know, to be convicted so they can put God first in their lives. Scott, why don't you get a reminder to you about the high school one more time? Yeah, again, if you have uh, graduating seniors this year, 2020, and they did not for some reason have a ceremony at their church, I mean, at their school, we will be having one here Tuesday, 
June 2nd at 5 p.m. here at the chapel. You can find out more information by calling the church at 909-396-1884. Get a hold of us on social media or the, uh, the website or the email, whichever you want to do. We'd love to have your kids participate and acknowledge your accomplishments. So thank you so much. Wade, uh, I asked Scott this earlier, as far as the opportunity we have right now for our children, pouring into them right now in the days that we're living in today, educating them regarding scripture and just how to navigate through this world in the challenging times. Yeah, Jesus told us to go and make disciples, and if we're not discipling our own children, we're failing in that great commission, ultimately. If we're not pouring into our families and pouring into our, our marriages and our children, and we're not leading them through this time right now, um, we're failing in our callings as leaders. Um, and to do that, we have to be led by the Lord. We have to have a genuine relationship with the Lord. Everything that's going on around us is very confusing. There's a lot of challenges taking place in the world around us, but it's all really simple. It's walking and having a relationship with the Lord. The disciples lived through crazy times. People in church history lived through crazy times. The believer's supposed to, and I continue to say, the believer's supposed to thrive during times like these and have peace in their life. So if you don't have peace in your life as a, as a husband or as a, as a wife, you're just not going to be any peace in your home. We have to get back to a simple relationship with the Lord, devotionally, just walking with Him in His spirit. Pastor Roll, any closing words? Pardon? Any closing words? No, just you guys, we love you. We'll be praying for you. And we love you guys so much, and if you haven't had an opportunity to make it out, we encourage you to come out to the 12 o'clock service, or you can tune in as well. There are many things that are going to be taking place this week. We thank you so much for your love and support and your prayers during this time, and we will continue to update you on the side of the Calvary Chapel Golden Springs going forward. Take care and love you. You're the treasure I desire. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And 
right now, right now I'm losing bed. I've stood on this stage night after night, reminding the broken it'll be alright. But right now, oh right now I just can't. It's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say 